speaker, has a programme which I highly recommend on Russia Today called Sputnik, which is shown five times on a Saturday. I think I could almost repeat to you the times that it is shown, but it's always a platform for alternative views, anti-imperialist views, and it's a real contribution to analysing the way in which the world is developing at the moment. I'm very pleased to introduce MP George Galloway. Chairman, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends. I'm not just a TV presenter, uh, by the way, but you can watch my television show. In fact, later today, uh, it's a very good one. My wife and I present it, and uh, we're very proud of it. Imagine, if you will, the consternation at GCHQ the people who are charged with listening in on Ambassador Alicia Castro's mobile telephone. <laughs> it's the Pope in Rome calling Alicia Castro. That must have uh, sent them scurrying to begin with, uh, but they must have been in a state of real depression at the end. A conversation between a Pope, finally, who believes in peace, justice, and equality, and the most popular ambassador in London, Alicia Castro. What a conversation that must have been. I was asking myself on the subject of the incredibly burgeoning popularity of this Latin America conference. I was asking myself, how is it that year after year it gets bigger and bigger? And now we can hardly fit into this great hall. And uh, even bigger premises, I think, beckons next year. Is it just because we love the people, the culture, the language, of Latin America? I don't think so, although all of those things are true. It's not just because we like the music, we like to dance in the way that they do. It's not just that some of the most exotic, wonderful places in the world are in Latin America, though all of that is true. The reason more and more people in Britain are coming to this conference is because Latin America is giving far more to us than we could ever give to Latin America in terms of solidarity. What do I, what do I mean by that? What did Hugo Chavez do for us? I'll tell you what he did for us. He proved that another world is possible, that another way is possible, a better way is possible. That's what he proved. He proved that you can build houses so that every Venezuelan can live in dignity. He proved that every child can have a computer. He proved that all the races, orientations, can live as equal citizens under the law. He proved that popular power, people's power, was more powerful than the military, than the Yankee imperialists trying to overthrow him. He showed everybody in the world what humanity was capable of, and he embodied in his formidable being dignity and strength and determination up to death and inspiration of that world after death. That's what Chavez did for us. What did Cuba do for us? Sometimes in Cuba they say thank you for this or that act of solidarity. I always reply, it's we who should be thanking you because you have shown us that it is possible to organize a society in which money, the dollar, is not king, that money is not everything that you can be poor in cash terms and rich with a health service, an education service, a culture and a dignity and determination 
and an internationalism that makes you the richest people on the earth, not the poorest. That's the truth of the matter. What did Che Guevara do for us? Why is his face, his mission, his spirit everywhere, truly everywhere in the entire world? Not just because he was devilishly handsome, though he was. Not just because of the extraordinary actions in which he was involved, but because he embodies as a man who was not a Cuban, but risked his life over and over and over again to help in the liberation of the people of Cuba, who was not an African, but who risked his life at the side of the greatest of all African leaders, Patrice Lumumba in the Congo, who was not a Bolivian, but gave his life's blood in the jungle of Bolivia to try to help liberate the people of that country because he could see the fake national boundaries set up for the benefit of others but which divide the people who should be and could be united. That's why we love Che Guevara. That's why he's present here today. He's present here today. And the revolution did not succeed in Bolivia, but it's succeeding now. Evo Morales, elected, re-elected, when the United States forced NATO partners to ground his aeroplane. Who came out of that episode with more dignity? The European stooges who were ordered by the White House to force down a presidential plane or the president who emerged from that plane with dignity and said, don't you dare trample on the sovereignty of Bolivia, my country, my land. Who came out of that more powerfully? That's why we're here in ever larger numbers, because Latin America proves to us that we are not people who believe in the past. We are people who believe in the future, a future that is being forged more clearly in Latin America than anywhere else in the world. In Venezuela, I was there with my wife for the last of President Chavez's great presidential victories, traveling around amongst the poorer people there, seeing the Cuban doctors at work there, seeing the masses pouring onto the streets to celebrate Chavez's victory. Poor people, shabby people, black people, indigenous people, all one behind the Bolivarian revolution. That's the future. How I wish that we could have a health service like they've got in Cuba, an education service, like they've got in Cuba. How I wish that we had a government standing up to the vulture capitalists like President Cristina is doing. All of us wish that. All of us know that what's happening in Latin America is the way forward, is the way of the future. And that's why we're here. Thank you very much indeed.